some really good testimonies here. Here we go. This one says, uh, they listened to how to reach your physical goals, and they said, good morning. I want to thank you all for the keeping this teaching available for the people. God led me over this past year to listen to it, and it has impacted my life in a very big way. I started a weight loss program in June of 2013, and I've already lost 84.2 pounds. There you go. Praise God for his strength and his love towards me. That's a good report, isn't it? The word works. And I really enjoyed this one. I kept reading it because I wanted to see where it was from. And you'll get it too as you listen to it. It says, kingdom greetings in the mighty name of our God, Exodus 14, 14. I want to begin by thanking the almighty God for his infinite mercy and his grace opportunity to meet through this medium. I know you will be surprised to see this letter, but I use this medium because it is the easiest and fastest way for me to reach you. Please pardon me. It was by the grace of God that I visited the Internet and was privileged to find and contact you. After prayerfully reading and studying your webpage, I was spiritually charged and moved and thrilled and excited. My spiritually, spiritual electricity went stronger than I was ever before. To find you is what I needed for spiritual growth. Right now, I don't feel like my feet are even touching the ground because the desire that I have has been ignited in me to read and study the things on your webpage. I am humbly praying in the Holy Spirit to visit, that your hearts will visit and humbly spend time with us here as our spiritual mentors. We hunger and thirst for fellowship and your teachings. If God provides the opportunity, we beseech you that brothers, you brothers, please make a trip to Macedonia. I hope to hear from you soon. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't that a good report? He was electrically charged. Yes. And this one was a gr really good report. It um, touched my heart because this is our heart's desire. It said one day she had to take her car into the shop. And I'm just going to kind of tell it to you because it's a little bit long. And she said she got to the repair shop and she said there was someone there that was going to work on her car. And she said usually she stood around and watched people work on her car because she didn't like to, what they did. Sometimes they did extra stuff. I guess she didn't trust people very much. She said, but this repair man was a tattoo man. And she said, I know we're to love those people. She said, but this man had the creepiest tattoos. She said, people say that tattoos tell the story of people's life. Well, this one must have been full of death and darkness. She said, because I normally would sit and read and watch them do all the work on my car. She said, but it was just skulls and crossbones. And she said, it just felt eerie. She said, so I moved away and went and sat inside. She said, and it just kept taking all day. It just took so long for him to fix my car. So I went out there and she said, all he was doing was sitting there listening to the CDs of you preaching in my car. <laughs> She said, I just stood there and watched as he sat there and listened to you preaching in my car. She said, the Word Production Center gets my vote. It gets my prayers. And it, if I could, I would volunteer all the time. I know it changed this man's life. Glory to God. But I said that to let you know, not long ago, I was standing out there in the lobby and somebody asked me a question. What if a person had blue hair? Could they come to this church? What if they had tattoos? Could they come to this church? Every seat should be filled, filled with people like that because that's what the world is. It's people that don't look exactly right or dress exactly right or they, maybe they smoke or they cuss. Hey, bring them to church. This is exactly where they should be. We don't care. Maybe they may cuss in the bathroom and you should say glory to God right behind them. Right? Hey, that's what the church is about. We should bring everybody we know to church and we don't have to change them. If they wear a mini skirt, they wear a mini skirt. Doesn't matter what they do. Bring them to church. And God can do whatever he needs to in their life. It's not our job to change them. It's our job to get them to the Lord. Right? Can you say amen? Stand up with me. And let's thank God for him working in people's lives no matter where they are in this world. It's not our job to change them. It's to lead them to the Lord. Can you say amen? Can you see, if you got to fight the good fight, there must be some fighting required. Yes. Huh? Yes. Are you willing to fight? Yes. You got to fight. How are you going to fight? Glory. This is not a slap fight. It's not a punch fight. Come on, what is it? What is it? What is it? 
It's not a knife fight. It's not a gun fight. It is a word fight. It's a word fight. Not an empty word fight, but a faith-filled word fight. Mm, hallelujah. Go to Romans. I, 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 let me add your scripture. I don't want to short you. Romans 10 and verse 8. He, 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 preview, he was quoting Old Testament scripture that said, don't say who will go up to heaven, bring the Lord down, who will go down to the earth and bring up from the depth above, who, who, who will go across the sea. Some great, huge effort. No. What saith it? The word is close to you. <laughs> That's also how close your victory is to you. That's also how, somebody say it's close, it's close. Healing, bills being paid, it's close, it's close, it's close. How close is it? It's as close as your mouth. How many, how many knew the answer was right under their nose? Right under their nose, the mouth. It, it, was, it was right there all the time. In your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Did you know Paul was a faith preacher? Oh, yeah. Verse 9, that if you will confess, what? With, why does he keep saying mouth? Have you noticed how many believers have become silent believers? Oh, yeah. So much so that when you and I stand up and make confessions like we do, people think, now that's strange. <laughs> Don't they? They go, why are they always getting up to us? Say this. Say that. Say this. That just bothers me. Why? Because you want to be quiet. Guess who else wants you to be quiet? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. The enemy yeah. wants you to keep your mouth shut yeah. and not dare say something full of faith. Yeah. Why? This is how you get born again. Yeah. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God's raised him from the dead, you will have a miracle of miracles. Amen. You will become a new creation. All things passed away, all things becoming new. Right. Is that right? Yes. How'd you get it? How'd you get it? How'd you get it? You didn't jump off the roof? Uh, nope. Huh? Nope. <laughs> How'd you get it? How'd you get it? You believed it in your heart. Yeah. And you took that faith that you had in your heart and you put it in some words and you said, and it was not empty and it was not vain. You said, I confess Jesus, Lord of my life. <laughs> and when you did the same Holy Ghost who moved over the face of the deep moved inside you. Thank you, Lord. Never say, I don't know if I can believe for a miracle. You already have. Yes. I said you already have. And, and you know how you got it. Yes. And the same way you got that miracle, you can get a healing miracle. You can get a financial miracle. These are actually lesser miracles yes. if you want to compare them. Because that has to do with temporary things. What's happened in you is eternal. Yes. Verse 10. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and that's not all. I said, that's not all. That's right. Can you see this hadn't been preached enough? Believing has been talked about. That's right. Confession has not. Amen. Not enough. Faith is not just believing. That's right. It's believing yes. and saying. Amen. Right? Confessing yes. the good confession is how you fight the good fight. Amen. Amen. With the heart man believes to righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Go to John 18. 
In 1 Timothy 6.13, you're not turning there, you're going to John 18. But we just got through reading this part of our text that Jesus confessed a good confession in front of Pilate. Is that right? And that's given us as the example of fighting the good faith fight. And we're reminded that Jesus is aware of us. God the Father is and Jesus is. And that you and I need to be stand up faith people. Right? Because the Lord's seeing us. And we need to do it what, like he did it. Do what he did. The, uh, the message Bible in 1 Timothy 6.13 says, He took his stand and didn't give an inch. <laughs> Tell me what Jesus did in front of Pilate. Somebody say, He took his stand and didn't give an inch. It's describing how you fight the good fight of faith with the good confession. Now let's read it again. Let's remind ourselves. John 18. When Jesus is standing in front of Pilate, Pilate spoke disrespectfully to him, dismissively to him. At one point, you know, he said, don't you know I can kill you or spare you? Hmm? Don't you remember that? Pilate was not a nice man. Just the Bible history we have. We know on one occasion, Pilate sent soldiers to where some of the people were making sacrifices and he mingled their blood with the blood of the animals they were killing. He, ju- he made a mass slaughter. He's a cruel guy. He has no problem killing people. He's done it a lot. And he's governor of Judea. He, he literally has the power of life and death over everybody out there in his hand and he don't have to think twice about killing people. And so Jesus knows from the natural what what he's dealing with here and he knows from the spiritual already though that he is on the course to the cross and he's already resigned himself to it. You know why he could let them crucify his flesh at the cross? Because he had already crucified his flesh in the garden. None of this is a surprise to him. But all, we're human beings. All of us got flesh. You know, he, Jesus himself prayed, if there's any other way, didn't he? Let this cup pass from me. And there's a lot of people that make good big confessions in church with everybody else around. Right? But just get them in the boss's office by theirself. And something come up, whether you're going to get a raise or not, or whether you're going to keep your job or not, and you'll see people fold like wet noodles. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I go over to that church, but I don't necessarily believe everything that they, like they believe it. I was thinking about leaving. <laughs> I'm telling I've, I have seen people fold like a wet paper bag over a few dollars. Just nothing stuff. That's not what Jesus did. I said, that's not what Jesus did. He's staring. He's looking at Pilate. He's looking death right in the face. And uh, he, he, in verse 36, uh, 33, Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. He called Jesus. He said, are you the king of the Jews? Yeah. Keep going. Jesus answered him. You say this of yourself or did somebody tell you about this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is he scared? No. No way. Is he scared of Pilate? No. Is he scared of dying? Come on, are you listening? Is he scared of the cross? No. Of the crucifixion? No. You know why he's not scared at all? Because he is full of faith. Yeah. He's full of faith yeah. and trusting yeah. in his Father. Yeah. That's right. Amen. You saying this of yourself or somebody tell you about this? <laughs> Pilate said, am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? 
here Jesus makes this confession that uh, is talked about there in, in 1 Timothy. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Jesus had revelation. He said, you know, later he said, don't you know I could call on the Father? He'd send me legions of angels. Amen. Pilate had no idea how precarious his situation was. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> A handful of angels could have wiped out the Roman legions just like that. Is that right? Could have. Could have. He said, but now is my kingdom not from here. Keep going. Pilate said, are you a king then? Here's where faithless people start crying. Hmm? Wanting to live. Begging for their life. Compromising their beliefs and their stand. Hmm? If you know you say the wrong thing right now, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Come on. A lot of people fold. Yeah. Jesus didn't hesitate. Uh -uh. I said he didn't hesitate. Right. He said, you say, I'm a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Amen. And he's doing it right now. Yes. Isn't he? Yes. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Yes. Oh, how many can see? Can you hear the confidence? Yes. Can you see the strength? Yes. Glory to God. Skip down to John 19. This wasn't over. After some things had happened, the scourging and everything else, he, uh, Pilate began to get shaken himself. His wife sent him word and said, I've had a bad dream about this guy. Do, don't have anything to do with him. Do not hurt him. Don't touch him. And uh, some of the others kept talking about him being the king and the son of God, and it scared Pilate. And he called Jesus back in and tried to work something out so they could avoid all this. <laughs> and uh, now look who's on the defense. Now look who's scared. And Pilate, and, and, and it, it upset him because Jesus wouldn't even talk to him then. He wouldn't even answer. And then he said to John 19, 10, he said, you don't speak to me? Do you not know I have power to crucify you and I have power to release you? This is where thousands of church going folks go, oh please, great pilot, please, please have mercy. Please, I know you do. I know you do. Spare my life. Spare my life. Hmm? Will you denounce all that Christian stuff? I'm, I'm flexible. <laughs> Let's find a workable situation here. Mm -mm. Jesus said, you could have no power at all against me. Now, how many know with these egotistical guys like this, that is not what you want to say, right? I mean, if you got any chance of getting out of there with your skin on, that's not what you say to guys like this. What are we seeing? Come on, make, connect the dots. Come on, tell me what we're looking at. We're right here. What are we looking at? We are looking at the master fighting the good fight of faith with his unswerving, unbending, unwavering, faith-filled words. Amen. Isn't he? Amen. He's looking Pilate in the face. He's looking death in the face. He's looking the grave and hell and sin in the face. And he said, you have nothing. You have no power at all <laughs> over me. When the enemy comes and tries to tell you, when he comes and tries to tell you, you are a victim in this situation. You are helpless. You can do nothing. 
You are a helpless pawn, a defeated victim. That's when something needs to rise up on the inside of you. Come on, are you listening? And you need to look it all in the face and you say, you have no power over me at all. I mean, how do you fight cancer? Huh? How do you fight depression? How do you fight addiction? How do you fight it? You can lay there and whimper and shake and cry and feel sorry for yourself and you'll be worse off tomorrow. Or, or you can remember who you are and whose you are and something can rise up on the inside of you and you can say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world and you can say cancer you have no power over me depression you have no power over me at all Poverty, you can't hold me down. You can't hold me back. You can't hold me in here. I'm coming out. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Addiction? Whether it's alcohol or heroin. Look it in the face and go, you do not have power over me. You do not control me. And if you'll do that in faith, I'm telling you, a power will come. A power will come. And it will change things in your life. And you lay hold. If the Lord tells you that he has bought and paid for your healing, you get a hold of it. You wrap your arms around it. If the Lord tells you he was made poor so you could be made rich, you wrap your hands Come on, and your arms and your legs around it and you lay hold of it and you say, this is mine. This is mine. This is who I am. This is what I am. This is what I have in Christ. And no matter if Pilate or the devil himself tries to intimidate you, you are not moved. many want your heavenly father? We just got through reading here that the father is watching and that Jesus is watching. How many of you want your heavenly father and Jesus to watch you in this life, to watch the stuff try to come against you and to watch, even though you might have shed a few tears or, or started thinking the wrong way, but to watch something come up inside you and you bristle and you raise up and you begin to speak the word of God and you begin to speak what he said? They want the father to go, that's my boy. That's my boy. That's my girl. That's my girl right there. That's my girl. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. And before all this is done, I think we're going to find that the fight itself is actually more important than the results. And that's to be continued for another time. Stand on your feet, everybody. Make plans to join us for the Greater Faith Conference 2015 with Brother Keith Moore at Faith Life Church in Sarasota, Florida, February 2nd through the 6th. Join us each evening for wonderful services where you will experience the life-changing Word of God through the teaching of Keith Moore. That leaves all day to enjoy the sights and sounds of the Florida Suncoast area. Start off 2015 by getting built up in faith and attending the Greater Faith Conference at Faith Life Church in beautiful Sarasota, February 2nd through the 6th.